uh, first we are going to critically examine the meaning of the verb mesu, and uh, after that we will see its limits and of course score. And finally, we will highlight its significance. So, let's see this. When we say asbab al nuzul, uh, as you rightly pointed out, asbab al nuzul refers to it, refers to circumstances, reasons for which, or circumstances upon which, hmm, a particular verse was revealed. Reason upon which, or circumstances for which, uh, specific verse uh, was revealed. But before we do that, let's quickly have a kind of preamble. Um, first, we have to acknowledge that, generally speaking, Quran classes are what? Uh, of two times. We have first section, which was revealed virtually for no reason. This is, of course, most of the verses, most of the verses of the Quran revealed without words, uh, for no reason, as, uh, as they say. The second section entails those verses that were revealed as a response, as a response to it, to some questions or uh, incidents. Um, and of course, this brings us to, to the question of Asbab al -Nuzul. So Asbab al -Nuzul itself can be divided into two. We have first category, um, uh, it refers to it, to the verses that, that were revealed to respond to uh, particular incident, particular incident or occurrence. For example, when the verse, uh, when Allah Almighty says, admonish your nearest kinsmen. This, uh, this verse essentially was revealed to the Prophet to, it, to start um, inviting his word, his nearest kinsmen to Islam. And they say charity begins at home. So he now Ascended as Safa, that very famous uh, mountain in Mecca, and uh, often that he told his people when they he shouted, "Oh, people, hey!" When they came, okay, he told them, "Okay, you know what? Would you agree with me? But well, sorry, if I tell you now that uh, there are some people out there coming to attack, will you agree?" They say, "Of course, because you are never known to be a liar. So why not?" I mean, after all, so he now told them this. In Nilakum Nadirun Mubin, or in Nilakum Nadirun Bayne Di Adabin Shadi, I am a warner for you because there is a, a, a punishment coming for anyone who decided to reject uh, Islam. So now, indeed, I am a plain warner to you of a coming severe punishment. Upon hearing that, Abu Lahab, his uncle, now says, is it for this reason that you gathered us? Tabalek. Like, may you perish. Okay, this is a strong uh, insult, I would say, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, uh, we'll have after saying that, you know, made his way out of the gathering and went back. So, Allah now the Almighty responded. Because I will have surrendered the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the Prophet, uh, Allah the Almighty now says, that is this verse. It is not the prophet that perished, but of course Abu Lahab himself, the one who perished, the first reads, the hand of the father of land. That is the meaning of Abu Lahab. Perished he, no profit to him from all his wealth and all his gains. So uh, what we now trying to point out well, this is what a response to it. A specific situation. Um, second category relates to it. Those verses came to respond to specific questions asked by the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi words to clear some confusion regarding some issues and, of course, some problems. Like we can see in the case of um, uh, Al Mujahidah, that woman who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, you know, asking him regarding the divorce uh, uh, by her husband. So now we will see that later. Um, the verses, those verses that relate to this second category usually contain ahkam, laws, as we can see. That provides answer to clear the confusion of what of the Sahaba of So, uh, as I said, how did I get to? Uh, no, not for that. 
Yeah, so let me start. Based on that, that woman, basically, she was an aged woman. She spent spent uh, a few years with her husband. So finally, he divorced her using for Islamic divorce. Uh, that was of Jahiliya, that is at Zihar. He told her, Anti Aliyah the Bahari Umi. This literally is a divorce. Um, it's like, uh, what is Your bank is like the bank of my mother. So it's like, what? Like, literally saying, I divorce you. So she found the message simply unacceptable because after spending um, many years, many, many years with him, so finally she found that her reward was just to be divorced, so she couldn't accept that. She now lodged her complaint to the Prophet Sallallahu where upon the Prophet, uh, initially, Prophet Sallallahu had no idea about how to respond to that time, because he was not, uh, in, you know, quite familiar with that type of divorce. He, he wasn't even sure whether it was divorce or not, because it was just al -Fihar. So, he finally, yeah, Sorry, he, he accepted it as divorce, but he, it was like irrevocable divorce. It was a, like a divorce that could not be uh, managed. It was a final divorce for her. So uh, when, when she came to the Prophet telling him that she was divorced, the Prophet told her, okay, now you can just go and uh, be patient. Be patient because nothing I could do. Because for him, it was an irrevocable divorce. That is uh, a type of divorce that uh, that cannot could not be reconciliated. Okay, I will say. So, but uh, having her insisted, okay, telling him that uh, please do something because uh, I, I'm exhausted. Please try to help me do something. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In those circumstances, Jibril Alaihi Salam basically came with the response that that woman. Could be taken back to that man. Okay? Uh, in other words, the report of the divorce was not irrevocable. It could be managed. So, uh, but now Allah the Almighty provides free solution to uh, to reconciliate. For example, um, to feed 60 needy people, uh, or um, fasting for two months, two consecutive months, or freeing a slave. These are three options provided by Allah the Almighty to, uh, you know, reflect our practice. So now, uh, you can see how uh, verses of the Quran came to us to fix the situation. In fact, even my time, when I reported that uh, that woman did not live there, uh, uh, I can say home or house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until Jibril came down with the revelation. Allah now the Almighty says, فَلَسَمِعَ Allah, قَوْلًا لَكِي تُجَهْدِلُكَ في زوجها وتشتكي إلى الله والله يسمع تحاب رقم إن الله سميع بصير. so this takes us to well significance of أسباب النزول. based on what we can, we say we can simply establish that that word أسباب النزول are critical are not only essential for understanding the Quran but critical to establishing its words its relevance or its I can say compatibility with uh, new world, as they say, or with the modern what, realities. So, if we want to indeed, uh, uh, you know, establish that uh, Quran is relevant to all circumstances, it's not something that is fixed to the situation of seventh century Arabia. So, the only way to do that is what is by critically reading Asbab al Nizu and examining their context. Maybe the Taymiyya. And Allah he categorically mentioned that it will be impossible to, uh, to comprehend the meaning of any verse of the Quran without investigating um, the circumstances upon which that verse was revealed. So we can see that Asbab al Nuzul is critical to understanding of the Quran. Um, secondly, it contributes significantly to better understanding of the verses of the Quran, especially those verses which appear more or less problematic. And it also helps us to, uh, to read the context of the verse. That is what they call pre-reading of the texts and uh, reading after the, uh, after reading and pre-reading. Reading before the text and reading after the text. Reading before the text 
is contextualizing of the verses in light of the circumstances upon which they were written. So now, as Babu as, uh, as we can see, it helps us to know the circumstances upon which the verses were built in order to help us fully appreciate the meaning. Um, understanding as Babu Nuzul is also critical to establishing the relevance. That, uh, you know, it is only by as Babu Nuzul that we will understand to what extent that uh, the, the verses of the Quran are relevant to modern challenges and modern exigencies. So uh, that is exactly what feminists essentially appear to be advocating the same. Uh, male scholars uh, actually decided to decontextualize the verses of the Quran. That, that is to read the verses out of their context. So they read them without given words. Special reference to the circumstances and conditions upon which those verses were revealed. Well, we have, uh, you know, in detail responded to the argument of feminists elsewhere, so there is no point to uh, repeat it here. But uh, essentially, we can see in some that feminists are on wrong side of history by uh, showing zero respect to Islamic male scholars. Uh, we have seen quite a few thousands of them who uh, have contributed in no small measure to preserve Islam, to you know, reveal all its details in its true color without having to be biased or monopolized or distort, as I can say, any part of the case. So their argument is baseless at best confusion. Um, for example, let's quickly have a point here. We say that as Babu Nuzul helped us to, to establish the relevance of the other, okay, so, sorry, to, to, it helped us to clear any confusion we had regarding what? Regarding uh, some verses which are confusing. Allah the Almighty says, to Allah the land, the east and the west, wherever you go, Okay, wherever, whichever direction you turn your faith, there is the presence of Allah. What does that mean? This uh, apparently shows that it is not necessary to face Al Qibla when, um, of course, superficial reading of the verse implies that it's not even necessary to face Kaaba because Allah says, wherever you go, it's okay. But it is only by reading this verse verse on its context, as we will get to know that uh, this verse obviously implies, uh, sorry, um, the confusion of this verse will be clear, because the, the verse, we, we will understand that one can observe his prayer towards any direction he wishes. But this confusion will be eliminated uh, as soon as we understand that the verse was referring to a specific situation. Um, for example, performing prayer during what? Uh, on a journey, for example, or uh, 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 supergatory prayer, that is napila. So napila on a journey is not necessary to face napila. Or it relates to a specific situation when someone found himself confused regarding Qibla. So if you go to a city and you find it difficult to locate Qibla, you can face any direction. And at the end of the day, your prayer is accepted. So it is not what? It is not general remark that uh, it's not necessary to face Al Qibla. Uh, but of course, uh, only it, it relates to this specific situation. And Ibn Umar rightly points that the verse should not be read externally. That is out of context. It should be read internally. What does that mean? Because it was referring to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he prayed, so purgatory prayer, that is Nafila, mm -hmm, on his camel. On his carnal, while he was proceeding from Mecca to Medina. So it was referring to a specific situation. Thus, it came to reduce the burden, especially uh, when a traveler, traveler decided to, it, to perform uh, nafila. So when you're on a journey, in your bus, in, in, on, on a plane, like in a coach, it's not necessary to wait. To just al qibla, you can pray wherever uh, you like. I think uh, this is the final slide. Um, we will just open flow now for discussion for the uh, next presentation from brothers and sisters. Uh,
and I wish you all the best. But before that, we'll respond to some questions regarding this one. Any question? Okay. Why do they think they need to read? 